President Joe Biden signed the Respect for Marriage Act into law, but that did not quell the controversy. Catholic bishops expressed deep concern, and now other groups are speaking out as well. White House correspondent Owen Jensen reports. Owen. Good evening to you, Tracy. Tonight, this all comes down to religious freedom. Should Catholics and other Christians be forced to go against their faith to support same-sex weddings? Many say no. Chart-topping singers, cross-dressers, and an assortment of gay rights supporters all invited to the White House South Lawn to witness President Joe Biden sign the so-called Respect for Marriage Act into law. We need to challenge the hundreds of callous, cynical laws introduced in the states targeting transgender children, terrifying families, and criminalizing doctors who give children the care they need. The president challenged traditional beliefs and raised the ire of conservatives. America First Works executive director Ashley Hayek wrote, America was built on the idea of freedom of religion, but the unnecessary Respect for Marriage Act threatens this fundamental protection. This is yet another egregious and deliberate attack on religious liberty by the radical left. Chad Wolf from the America First Policy Institute agrees. He says the new law puts every American's foundational religious liberties at risk. Also, the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit continues. About 60 percent of Africa's population is under age 25. Today, President Biden addressed business leaders. This forum is about building connections. It's about closing deals. And above all, it's about the future, our shared future. The Biden administration trying to convince Africa it can count on the U.S. to be there and that democracy is far better than autocracy. Because when Africa succeeds, the United States succeeds. Quite frankly, the whole world succeeds as well. Meanwhile, 10 years ago, the massacre at Sandy Hook. President Biden writing, 20 young children with their whole lives ahead of them. Six educators who gave their lives protecting their students. We have a moral obligation to pass and enforce laws that can prevent these things from happening again. Now back to the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit. All those heads of state, some 49 of them and their spouses, will come to the White House tonight for dinner. Then tomorrow there will be high-level discussions among leaders before they depart. At the White House, Owen Jensen, EWTN News Nightly.